I record the class on the cloud. I request you to shut down your computer, please. Yeah. So today we are going to learn about autoregressive model. <clears throat> We are going to learn auto regressive model. Auto. Did I share the screen? You are sharing a screen. Yeah. Auto regressive model. Yeah. Oh, it is not open. Thank you. So last class, we learned moving average method and I started discussions by giving an example how response variable like time series data, YT is modeled in terms of the only error terms. You remember that, right? Only in the error terms. Today, I'm going to show you how to time series data is modeled with respect to time series data in previous time period. For example, yt can be modeled as a function of yt minus one, yt minus two, yt t minus three, like this way. So current time series value will be predicted based on the past time series value, okay? How the mathematical model looks like? Mathematical model looks like yt equal to suppose this is my intercept alpha plus, I want to write here in terms of suppose beta one, then y t minus one, and then I want to write here beta two, y t minus two, and it will go suppose up to p beta p y <coughs> t minus p, and then there is a white noise, so which has a mean zero is in there standard deviation one something like this or a standard deviation sigma square mean zero and standard deviation sigma square so it is written as a r p a r p auto regressive with p legs leg so like time leg right it is time t it is time t minus one with leg one this is called t minus two that means two leg this is up to t minus p, that is called the time p leg, leg variable. So that means here I am modeling current data with the combination of previous time period data, but same variable. But in moving average, what we did, we predicted current value in terms of the error and how to error was computed, I mentioned that by an example. Today, first I will give a example real life how these models are constructed. What is partial autocorrelation coefficients after, after uh, discussing these things. So when you understand the real life scenario, where we should apply this, what type of lag we should use. Should we use all lags like T minus one, T minus two, T minus three, T minus P, or we should specify some legs and some of the legs we will draw. So I'm going to give a example by writing something, by drawing something. If you try to understand this thing, then rest of the things are easy. Clear, right? Okay, take a look. Suppose I am a, suppose I am a farmer who produce Cattle meat, okay, I am a farmer who produce cattle meat. Farmer, I am a farmer. And I produce cattle meat. I want to see the demand of the cattle meat by month. Understand, right? And then I will deliver, I will supply. So if I want to draw a picture like this way, so I am a businessman as well as farmer, I sell cattle meat, but I want to know, I want to predict the demand of the meat. And based on that, I want to build my model. And after building my model, I want to predict. Clear, right? 
So take a look at that. If I want to draw these things like this way, <clears throat> so suppose this is two zero one zero, this is two zero one one, this is two zero one two, this is two zero one three, and this is two zero one four. Okay, so in this case, this is equal to half. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So this is the twelve month period that I have drawn in there. So let me draw in again in here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 9, 10, 12. <clears throat> so I have a cattle meat in here. So Amount uh, uh, amount of cattle meat or maybe uh, cattle meat in kg. So meat in kilogram. Okay, meat in kilogram in there. So now suppose in two thousand in here. So I starts from there, and then I go there, and then I come there, I go there, and then go there. One, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, uh, so after that, suppose, after that, suppose there is a, like this, and then again, You see that, right? So I'm saying like half of the year it is increasing and then there is a decreasing and then again there is a plateau like almost same. For example, in this case, if you take a look at this, in this case, it is same, almost same. Uh, draw. In this case, it is become stagnant. It's become stagnant, same, something like this. But if someone take a look at the series, he can he can easily predict well half of the year goes up then is go down goes up then goes down maybe people make a lot of stock during that time then they cannot sell it like the retailer cannot sell it so they understand because they have to order me i have to slaughter my cat i sorry i have to slaughter my cat all and then we have to we have to sell it right so now in order to do these things this modeling so I have a, so this is suppose my current year, then that could be T minus one and then T minus two, T minus one, T minus two, T minus three, T minus 12, something like this. Okay, if it, is, if it will go by the month, if it, if it will go by the month, it will be T minus one, T minus two, T minus three, T minus 12, something like that. So this is the way, suppose I have the data. After this data, my purpose is to find, so suppose, should we model like this way, yt equal to beta zero? This is the most important question. Should I model like this way, yt minus one, beta two, yt minus two, beta three, yt minus three, all the way, beta three, y, T minus 12. Should I model like all of this? Do you understand? Should I model like all of this or we should model only some of the legs? That is the most important question. You understand, right? So I have data. All of this is data in this format. 
is uh, it is it, it is given, and the way I have written here t, it should be like most current one is here y t, and this is y t minus one. The way I have written, this is not right. The most current one is this one. But the important question is, should I should I model all of the leg? Or there is a procedure we can do some legs. Do you understand the question? How can I know that one? You understand the question, right? So here, take a look at that. The main question is coming from there. I should I model all of the leg or should I model on some of the legs? What is leg? Y t minus one. So that means current data t will be predicted based on the immediately past month data or immediately past year data or immediately past year day or immediately past uh, week. So there are how many weeks? 52 weeks. There are how many months? 12 months. There are how many years? There are maybe in my data, there are altogether uh, 50 years of data. Should we do one leg or two leg or three leg? or four leg, or some of this we will consider, some other we should not consider. That is the things that I'm going to discuss now, later. <clears throat> so take a look that uh, there is a concept known as a partial, uh, partial autocorrelation function. This is known as the partial autocorrelation partial autocorrelation function partial autocorrelation function okay partial autocorrelation function there is a name so what does that correlation means that correlation means suppose you have a um, yt y t minus 1 y t minus 2 y uh, t minus 3 y t minus 4 y t minus 5 all of these up to y t minus 12. So this is the way this is the way you have all the data. Okay. This is the way all the way you have the data. So from there what you have. So suppose you have here 10 data point, suppose 20, 30, 40, 50, 90, 70, and 20, 60, something like these data. Okay? So this is the most updated data in there, right? This is the most updated data. So what should I do in here? T1 means this is 20, this is 20, this is 40. That is so, this will come in there. 50 and then uh, 20, 30, 40, 50, 90, 70, 20, like this and then 60. Clear, right? You are understanding, right? Right? So in this way, same format, we can do same format in here. Okay? Same format in here. Here, if I want to do it in here, because this is missing now, this is missing. So there should not be anything. If we want to consider in there, just bring it in here. Here will be 20. Here will be 30. Here will be uh, 40. It will go like this way. Ready, right? So partial autocorrelation function means I have to find the correlation between this and that okay and that will be the partial autocorrelation written as t and t minus one clear clear so suppose i want to continue it in here 40 and then there is a 50 and there is a uh, 90 and there is a 70 and then it will go down go down in here 70, 20, and 60. Okay? So now, the correlation between this and that is known as rho y t and y t minus 1. So this is the correlation of that. 
that is the correlation of that. Partial autocorrelation. Other variable I am not considering. Now let me explain what is the what is this one? Rho y t and y t minus 2. This is the correlation between this. Let me take a different color. I want to take a different color. That is the correlation y t and this one and, and that one. Okay? Are you understanding, right? Okay. When I am finding these two correlations and completely ignoring this one. Understand? Understand? When I am finding correlation between yt and the second leg, I am completely ignoring this one. In that way, for all 12 legs that I am going to use for the multiple years of data, multiple years of data that I am going to use for the 12 legs, <coughs> Understand multiple years of data that I'm going to use. I have to plot a autocorrelation function. So let me show you these things. How I decide. So this is my zero. This is my partial autocorrelation function, which autocorrelation always between negative one to positive one correlation. Okay. So this is my zero one. Then what I will do, I consider leg one, leg two, leg three, leg four, leg five, up until leg 12. One, two, three, four, five. Clear, right? So now, suppose this is equal to, this line equal to, this line equal to, This line equal to negative 0 0.10 correlation. That is equal to uh, uh, positive 0 0.10 correlation. Okay. This is the threshold value. Now the partial autocorrelation between T and first leg. So that means this is T minus 1. This is T minus 2. This is T minus 3. So here the autocorrelation function, suppose I plot, I got it in here. So which is, this is a threshold value. If any partial autocorrelation between two series, between two series of different legs, current and then other legs, if that is less than 0 0.10 or negative 0 0.10, we would not consider that one. So now this one is the autocorrelation. This one is the autocorrelation between leg current one and first leg and which exceeds this, this thresh value. Okay. So second one we are getting in here. Second one, suppose we are getting in there. So which exceeds also negative point. Okay. The third one we got in there just. Okay. Fourth one we got in here. Fifth one we got again in there. Okay. And similarly, the 12 one we got it in there. Okay. So from this, we found that first leg has a high correlation with the current data yt. Second leg has a high negative partial autocorrelation, ignoring the first leg has a exceeded the thrash, threshold value, which is negative point. So that means this one, this one, that one, and that one is important. So when I will write the model, I will write yt equal to beta zero plus beta one, y t minus one plus beta two, y t minus two, and beta five, y t minus five, and then beta 12, y t minus 12. Do you understand? So why we do not make a, uh, like the autoregressive functions like this way, because the correlations between different legs are not giving me the desired result. So the leg that I will check with the current value t with the different <laughs> legs. You understand, right? So now you understand why I choose 
this value. Why I did not choose beta 4 and then beta 6, 7, 8, 9, 10? Because in that case, the autocorrelation function value falls within the threshold, negative 0.10 to positive 10. You have a question? Yes. So the threshold is it like fixed or? It is 10 percent statistically. Say what? So 10 percent means correlation is very low, right? So that's the rationale. That's the rationale. But if you find that like your data uh, might have a very low correlations, uh, then you can reduce it further. You can say that one percent. Understand? That depends on the data. So suppose you are doing a research article and then data is very bad and the correlation structure you found that the correlation is not that much high, then you can say that, well, I did not find that this is a time series data, but the uh, partial autocorrelation is not that high. So I choose my threshold is 1%. Okay, you have to explain those things. Because then what else you can do? This is the time series data. You need to model it <laughs> auto regressive format. Clear, right? So that will that is the beginning of the discussion. So why we need autoregressive model? Autoregressive model means uh, you are modeling current data with the previous data, but time evolving there. <clears throat> this is the autoregressive model. Okay, rest of the class, I'm just doing all of those mathematics that are behind in there. You understand this one, right? So if you see any, or, or uh, otherwise, sub, suppose you see when you will get um, positive autocorrelation. So first one, you get like this, second one, like this, third one, like this, this, this. So that means successively positive autocorrelation, right? Successively positive. And then after a pause, and then you are again getting like this, this increasing like this way. So that means autocorrelation are positive successively. Okay. So this is one. And similarly, if it will go down, that means negative autocorrelations. And then when there will be no autocorrelation, if you see like this, and then, and then, and this, and then, and then. Okay. So that means you said sometimes positive, sometimes negative. So that there is no any pattern. There is not any pattern. <clears throat> okay, so now let me start writing all the materials for uh, autoregressive model. <clears throat> I have uploaded this material uh, in. Um, in your class lecture, but you can still write it, or if you want to listen, you can listen it. But uh, these are the very important concepts running here, or why we need a covariance structure, why we need correlation structure, because most of the things can be obtained from the covariance and correlation structure. That is why I'm going to derive all of those. So autoregressive process are, as their name suggests, Regressions on themselves. <clears throat> Auto regressive process as their name suggests <clears throat> regressions on themselves are regressions on themselves. A pth order autoregressive process autoregressive process is defined as
you can put intercept, you can avoid intercept. I am not writing the intercept in there. Phi one, phi two, y, t minus two, and it will go phi p, y, t minus p, and then this is one. So I want to add one thing more. <clears throat> uh, suppose there is a situation that you are getting almost approximately the good result from a simple model. In such a cases, statisticians do not allow, do not like to use more complicated model if you get the almost same result. Okay, so you still if you are saying that why you should not model on the on legs, like particularly some legs, the rationale is that the correlation between them are very low. If we uh, still put them in the model, we might end up with the overfitting of the model. Okay, you might end up with the overfitting of the model. So current value of the series YT is a linear combination of P most re P most recent values of itself plus an innovation term. As you have seen, so current value of the series is a linear combination of the pth term of the uh, pth uh, order of the response variable. And in addition to that, there is a innovation terms, which is an error term as a mean zero and variance sigma score. So that incorporate everything new in the series at time t that is not explained by the path value. So that is the explanation that this innovation term that incorporate everything new in the series at time t, everything new in the series, some other factor could be in there. For example, uh, this is just on the time. Uh, some other factor means suppose the time is summer time. And if you are, if you want to predict like the ice cream uh, demand or sales, then those are the factors will, will go on to that, uh, uh, to that uh, error term. Okay. So assumption. So assumption for every T, we assume that Every T we assume that E T is independent of all other legs. So this is a current <coughs> data and that is a current error. So that means these and that are not independent. So if you want to find the covariance of OIT and ET and expected value of OIT and ET, there could be some results. So for that is why for every T, we assume that ET is independent of OIT minus one, T minus two and rest of the things. So this is one of the very important assumptions. Who came up with this model? Who is the person who first came up with the model? In 1928, the name of the person is Yol. Okay. Uh, first carried out the original work on autoregressive um, model. So he first car uh, carried out first autoregressive model. Is 19, 1920, 1926, 1926. This is 1926. So when you read something, some statistical or any other thing, first try to learn who first gave the idea. And in such a cases, you, why I'm saying that in such a case, you know, maybe there would be some history or a story behind that, how he come up with that idea. So one thing I want to discuss little bit in here, you know, this, right? This normal distributions, right? Right. An interesting story I'm going to tell. This is everyone know, right? Do you know what is... What does this mean? Six people. Do you know this? 
base critical region. What does this mean? It's test of hypothesis question, right? Base critical region. So the hypothesis that we want to test for possible rejection under the assumption that it is true. So it is Neyman. And there was no theory to prove this. Everyone says that if this is the extreme value, right? This is the extreme value, right? If if like someone is making 97 percentile, then I want to make the average score. If this person will be included on the sample, then there is a chance that average value non hypothesis will be rejected, right? Because of the inclusion of that, right? Like a lot of people are included in the sample, but I'm going to taste the average, but the lot of people included in the sample that are in the top 5%, top 10%, understand? So I want to find the average test score A is zero, mu equal to 50, but the sample that I have, that included people, most of the people or many people or some people from this region. So they increase the average, right? So in that case, null hypothesis will be rejected, right? So null hypothesis will be rejected on the basis of what? That fall, this is a 5%. This is called the error, error thing, right? So now when the Neyman was working, Neyman was working with his PhD student, the PhD student asking him why this is base critical region, why this is the rejection region. That was the question from the PhD student. I'm talking about 1929, 1930. So the PhD student asking why this one? He said that I want to take 5% in here. See the student how talent? He said, I want to take 5% in here and if it is falling there, then I want to reject. Do you understand the student talented questions? But this is not an extreme high or extreme low, right? So the professor is arguing that the, you are asking me questions, this one, but this is not an extreme high or extreme low. The pro student said that they, then why should I go there? And that thing, everyone understanding, but it has to be proven by theory. Without theory, you cannot, you cannot prove anything, right? Someone will say this, someone will. So that means if you consider that as your critical or rejection region, then your power of the test will be the highest. And then he was arguing with the PhD students in Poland. In Poland, later he came to Berkeley, USA as a professor, and there is a name and uh, professorship is in there. And then uh, he went to the movie because that was their wedding anniversary. His wife was waiting. And then they together went to the movie, but the professor took a piece of paper with him. And then he was thinking all the time, the student asking me questions. And then during the intermissions, during the interval of the movie, he take a piece of paper and thing, and he wrote the theory. And he said that that's the rationale. Theoretically, he proved that thing when he was watching the movie and there is a 15 minutes or 30 minutes interval, and it is there. Uh, wedding anniversary. So when you will become scientist and do the PhD and do start working there, and especially supervised PhD student, you will say uh, you are doing working, you are work talking with your children, but uh, wife driving, but you are always thinking something. Do you understand what I said? So that's the rationale I said that 1926. Uh, this is developed because he was having some problem, how can I do this? How can I do that? So he, he came up with this idea. So Ewell, 1926, gave the idea of autoregressive model, okay? So now I want to start autoregressive model of the first order. First order autoregressive model is written like that way. Y, T minus one, and then ET. This is the first order autoregressive model. Let me put a name. I want to give a number in there as a two. The first one that I wrote, this is one I want to write the equation number one. So now we are going to do conduct some estimations on this. I want to I want to express these things in terms of some mathematical. That is the unknown in here. Purpose is to, I write this is a 
first order autoregressive model, right? I'm just modeling yt on first leg. I'm just modeling on yt on this. So now the purpose next uh, couple of minutes, I'm going to discuss how to how these things uh, could be estimated, the phi. Understand, right? So last class I have discussed and then after discussing, I ask you the question. So like when uh, response variable is yt and it was function in terms of the error terms, how to estimate those psi, right? So actually this should be given, right? Then I say that when I put the tables in the table format, I put the phi's value. Okay, so now one question is stationarity or stationary process. So let me write something about this stationarity or stationary process. Stationary process. So the sequence of random variable sequence of random variable I want to write it like this way yt could be written as t equal to 0 plus minus 1 plus minus 2 and then it will go like this is called a stochastic process is called a stochastic process and serves as a model for an observed time series for an observed time series. It is known that complete probabilistic structure of a such, such a process is determined. It is known that complete probabilistic structure of such a process Such a process is determined by the set of distributions by the set of distributions of all finite collections of all Twice. So that means I want to know the probabilistic structure. Probabilistic structure. So in order to know the probabilistic structure, we need to know such a process determined by the set of distributions of all finite collections. All finite collections without which we cannot determine the probabilistic structure. Fortunately, there is a way Fortunately, we will not have to deal explicitly with these multivariate distributions. With this multivariate distribution, 
because much of the information in this joint distribution because much of the information of the joint distributions can be described can be described in terms of mean variance and covariance in terms of means variances and I have a rationale to write these sentences. So multivariate distributions is needed for uh, regression model when you dependent variable as well as so take a look at that when we when we model multiple linear regression model we consider this right x1 i beta 2 x2 i beta 3 x3 i plus epsilon i in this case these x i's are fixed this is explanatory variable or predicted variable these x i's are fixed do you understand that that is a fixed but now what we are doing we are doing these things these dangerous things we are doing beta 0 beta 1 y t minus 1 beta 2 y t minus 2 this is a random quantity that is also random quantity these are all response variable which is known as the stochastic processes what is the difference between random variable and stochastic variable random variable means random variable means that is a mapping from sample space to real life and it has a certain probability but stochastic variable is what a stochastic variable is a random variable in, in addition to that there is a time variable each each observation is coming with respect to time for example if i ask about her cholesterol it is just a cholesterol her height it is just the height but if some values come with respect to time for example a stock price a stock price comes to the beginning price close price average price right by day so stochastic process or stochastic variable means the values are coming this is a random variable but in addition there is also a time now as there is a uh, model like this way we might need to have a multivariate distributions but fortunately we do not need to look for the multivariate distributions because of what we can find we can find we can find the mean variance and covariances to explain those things which i am going to show you later today do you understand right see that is why i write these things try to understand i have written these things why i have written these things in this case this x1 x2 x3 these are predictor variable but they are fixed they are not random okay but in these cases these are stochastic processes series so in such a cases we do not need to be worried about the multivariate distributions of these variables. Instead, we can find simply from the mean variance covariance structure. <clears throat> okay, so after doing this, now um, for a stochastic process, this the mean function is this. If this is our stochastic process, if this is our stochastic process that takes value 0 plus minus 1 plus minus 2 if this is our stochastic process the mean function mu t is written as expected value of yt for all t takes value 0 plus minus 1 plus <coughs> minus 2 and then plus minus 3 okay it is a time variable so that is why we have written like this way 
So it could be a step also, backward step, forward steps, and that is why they might take sometimes negative number. In the random walk, when it is modeled in terms of random walk, it can take back steps. So back steps means negative, and then that is why it is written like this. So remember, our purpose is to today estimate this one. I, I put a color in there. Okay, this is five. Okay, so uh, we want to we want to know how to estimate this one because y t is a random, y t minus one is also a random. How to do this? So we are going that way. Okay, so mu t is just the expected value of the process at time t. In general, mu t can be different at each time point. Okay, at each time point, mu t could be different. So the auto covariance function is written like auto covariance function. Auto covariance function would be written covariance of yt and y s covariance means joint variability between two different time point of the same variable so here uh, for st s comma t i can write here zero plus minus two like this so this is the notation. Now, if I want to write it in this format, y, t, y, s, then it is written as expected value of y, t minus mu, t and uh, y, s minus mu, s. If the multiplication is conducted over there, then we get expected value of y, t y s and then minus expected value of that one we will end up with mu s and mu t this is what we can get okay this is what we can get now after auto auto covariance function we need to find now auto correlation so auto correlation function this is auto covariance function now autocorrelation autocorrelation function could be defined as rho t comma s could be written as correlation of y t and y s For t comma s written as zero plus minus one plus minus two, it will go like that way. Y t y s could be written as covariance of y t y s divided by variance of y t. and variance of y s t and s that is the way it has been defined so now this could be written as t comma s this could be written as t comma t because the variance is the uh, on on the same uh, same time process and then this is written as s comma s Purpose is to estimate those things. So this is the way variance and covariance and correlations function are defined. Okay. This is the way variance, uh, covariance and autocorrelation function is defined. So some well-known fact of these, some well-known fact of these are These things. 
एस कॉमा टी इक्वल टू वेरियंस ऑफ सॉरी टी कॉमा टी इक्वल टू वेरियंस ऑफ वाई टी नंबर टू कोवेरियंस नोटेशन कुड बी चेंज इट डजेंट मैटर this is the covariance structure it could be changed like that way so remember i clearly wrote we do not need to be worried about the complicated multivariate distributions because those uh, those uh, parameter could be computed by using variance covariance and autocorrelation function so this is always true there is a theoretical proof for this which is cauchy's schwarz inequality that is known as the cauchy schwarz inequality times so that means covariance of a quantity is always less equal to always less equal to this because because this is variance at t variance at t so that variance is always positive so it should be always under the square root it should always be positive but covariance could be negative could be positive so that is why a absolute sign has been put if for the two different time point t and s if covariance are found that covariance cannot exceed the square root of the variance of those time points of the series that is the point and then at same time for the two variables correlation coefficient is equal to 1 so for example x and x their correlation is always 1 okay same variable correlation is always 1 so that is the meaning of that number 5 these are some uh, characteristics similarly like this one if you want to write like this way and like that way it doesn't matter which time point is coming so this is always true and then correlation coefficients can never exceed 1 so that is why absolute sign less equal to 1 absolute correlation coefficient is always less equal to 1 if you take out this absolute sign then rho t comma s less equal to 1 less equal to negative 1 so this is the expression so i have how many pages to derive it finally let me couple of pages yeah so until four five pages is still there so now the number 7 this is true covariance of two series where constant involved that could be written as y t i t j y s j t j and s j if they goes by n this goes by n then this could be written as like this m n i goes one j goes One C I D J and covariance of just the two series Y T I Y S J and number eight is variance which also involve covariance term C I Y T I if this is the scenario I goes one to n. then it could be written as ci square and i goes one yti plus 2 and then here i equal to 2 to n j equal to 1 to i so it i can prove these things but due to the time limitation i just writing these things ci cj and then covariance of y t i y t j
So this is the if two series appears with some constants, then that their covariance and variance structure could be expressed like that way. Now I am going to construct a autoregressive model from a random walk. So I start with the y1, then y2, and then y3, and finally end up with y. T. How this could be constructed from a random walk and from there I will start computing their uh, mean variance, covariance and correlation coefficients and finally for some certain time point how the correlation behave. If the time point is distance, time point is close, how the correlation uh, uh, behave that, that is the thing I am going to discuss. So let, this is a random walk, random walk. From the random walk, I'm constructing autoregressive model. Okay, autoregressive model I am constructing from random walk. Let E1, E2, B, A, sequence of independent identically distributed random variable be a sequence of sequence of independently and identically distributed random variables with zero mean and variance random variable with zero mean and variance sigma square so the observed series yt is considered as follows. The observed series. Observed series yt is constructed as follows. How y1 equal to e1 and then y2 equal to e1 plus e2 which is equal to y1 plus e2. y3 which is equal to e1 plus e2 plus e3 which could be written as uh, this is y1 okay and this is y2. So it could be written as y2 plus e3, right? So because these two equal to y2. So similarly, if I move, so you can ask me question, hey, professor, why did you check like this way? Suppose I want to, I want to predict stock prices, right? First day. I want to predict the stock price for a day. So I went to the, I went to the like uh, uh, stock exchange at 9 a.m. is open. I saw the first day price and that is what I consider my arrow Y1. Okay. And then it is added. And then it is added Y E1 plus E2, the second one pair, like this way. And it has been constructed like this format up until if I go there yt equal to e1 plus e2 plus et which could be written as y t minus 1 plus et you got it right so now see how did i construct yt equal to yt minus 1 plus et Okay, this is still, it is just a random walk, but are you seeing there is no, uh, no like the parameter in, in, in here. Now, if I want to find the mean of this, number one, if I want to take expected value of yt, since each of these has a mean zero, so it is equal to zero. So that means mu t equal to zero for this one. Okay, 
So variance of one equal variance of this equal to what? Variance of yt equal to what? So there is the t terms. So that means sigma square e means error sigma square e and it will go sigma square e. So that means t sigma square e. So variance is this. Now we want to, this is a random work. So now if I want to compute the covariance of time t comma s, which is covariance of y s and y t, which could be written as covariance of e1 plus e2 up until e t, I wrote first one, then e1 plus e2, e2, it will go e t plus e t plus one and then end up in e s. Okay. So that means in this case, if I want to find the variance, only the square term will work. So this is what we have. Then e1 and e2 covariance will be zero. So that means all square term will be considered e2 square and up until e square t, which is nothing but the t sigma square. Because if you multiply this one with that one, that is covariance of e1 and e2, the successive error term has a zero covariance. Okay, so that is a, that part would be vanished. So I have a same variance and covariance structure. Now I want to compute their correlation structure for this uh, random walk. So if I want to do this, this is the correlation structure. Correlation could be done between two series. Definitely there is a Y, there is a Y, and then there is a square and variance of YT and their variance of YS something like this, then we can put here t sigma square and then here we can put here t sigma square s sigma square, t sigma square s sigma square, variance one. So sigma square sigma square square root takes out then gone, then I have t in the up, bottom I have t and then bottom I have s, okay? So now it will be t over s like this. So this is the covariance, variance, and correlation coefficient for this series, this series, okay? This series. Now, this is a simple random walk. This is a simple random walk that I have discussed in here. I want to tell you something in there. Take a look. Rho t comma s equal to square root of t over s, right? Clear? Now, if I want to plug in there, row one comma two, if you plug, what are you getting? Half. Okay? Now, if you plug in here, row eight comma, eight comma nine, then you are getting eight over nine. If you plug here, row 24, and 25, then you are getting 24 over 25. But now if you want to plug here row 1 comma 25, then you are getting 1 over 25. Take a look. This one equal to uh, 0.70. This one equal to 0 0.70. This one equal to 0.943. This one equal to... 0.98, this one equal to 0.98, and that one equal to 0 0.20. Can anyone of you give me explanation? That's the action of the If lag is one, lag is one, then are you saying that? Higher, higher correlation, right? Compared to the distant lag. Compared to the distant lag. Okay.
So the value of y at uh, neighboring time points are neighboring time points are more and more strongly and positively correlated uh, as time goes by. On the other hand, the values of y at distant time points are less and less correlated. So that is the purpose of this. If your series, if your series yt could be expressed y t minus one, and this, this is a pure random work. This is a pure random work. If this is the series, in such a cases, if these two series are adjacent to each other, then their correlation would be very high compared to the distance time point. Here is the example. Understand? So now I want to start a moving average for uh, for this, and after that I want to compute uh, this one. Y t y t equal to this y t minus one plus epsilon. I want to show you how to this could be computed easily without any predictive modeling, without any like. Uh, Big decision, complicated, uh, what it called, uh, like um, differentiations or any algorithm, something like that. Okay. So now suppose previously my series was, I started my series Y1 with the E1, Y2 with the E1 plus E2, right? This is the way I started and, and I ended up YT equal to E1 plus E2 plus E T, something like this I started and I constructed their mean, their variance, their covariance and their correlation coefficients, right? And that is I discussed as a random walk. Now I want to find the moving average of two random walk. So if I want to write like this way, yt equal to et plus et minus one divided by two. This is the moving average. If this is the moving average, then if I want to find the mean, our mean equal to expected value of yt equal to zero, and then our variance of yt, which could be one over four, and then there is a sigma square and sigma square, sigma square and sigma square, which could be written as uh, half sigma square equal to 0.5 sigma square. Now, how can I find the covariance for this one? See, now I consider this series. Okay, now I consider this series and I want to see like the how their covariance structure work. So now for the covariance one, covariance of yt, yt minus one, That could be written as t minus one divided by two, and then t minus one plus t minus two divided by two. If this is multiplied, then we will see only covariance of e t minus one and e t minus one is matching divided by four, which we will give from we will get from there. This is sigma square and this is four. So that means 0.25 sigma square and there 0.5 square. Now we want to find the covariance between these two. We already obtained the covariance of these two. So now these things could be written as correlation coefficient structure. See, this is a T comma S would be written as 0.5 sigma square, 0.5 sigma square, if t equal to s. So t equal to s, that means this is a variance part. And then it could be two if t minus s is equal to one. t minus s equal to one, there is a only one leg. Otherwise it is zero, if more than one leg, T minus S is greater than one, then it is zero. 
So now this covariance function and variance function, if we put together, we get a correlation coefficient function 1.5 and 0 under this condition t equal to s and then t minus s equal to 1, t minus s equal to 1 and t minus s greater than 1. So how did I get this? Just combining this one in the numerator and the denominator is the covariance part. If we plug, we got this. So this is the correlation. This is the correlation. This is the covariance, which also had a variance part if T and S equal to same. So we now learn the mean variance, covariance and correlation pattern of this moving average where E T and E T minus one are two elements of the random walk. So this way we can this way we can learn some variance, covariance, and correlation structures of the random walk. Okay. So if you want, you can take a five minutes break and let me drink some water. Then I will uh, main focus is to derive like the uh, five, which I'm going to derive next now. Mm -hmm.
Okay, so let me start these things. Yt equal to t minus 1 plus et. From there, our purpose is to have some estimations of this side. Okay, so didn't I tell that we do not need to be worried about the multivariate distributions of the yt and yt minus 1? Instead, now when these derivations will be done, you will see how we will get this value. Okay, so let me write here variance of yt, then it should be variance of this yt minus 1 plus et. Okay, take a look. This is a constant with the variable term, so I can write like this yt minus 1 plus variance of et. Okay. So now take a look. This is equal to sigma square and this is also equal to this is equal to this is equal to the variance that we find before. This is equal to the variance that we find before. Here. Here we denote it as a if T and S are the same, T S and S are the same. So this should be just, this should be just, we want to denote it just gamma zero. So from there, from there we want to put there, this is equal to zero. And here, this one is also equal to gamma zero. And then this is equal to sigma square. From there, if we take common, then we will have sigma square over one minus pi square. So this is the value of the, so do you have a question? How did I get these things? So these things I already mentioned in there in previous term. So for example, take a look at this. When T and S, T and S, T and S equal to same, then it's become variance. Okay. T and S equal to same, then it will become variances. So what did I write like this way? This is variance of that. So variance of that is not equal to sigma square. Variance of error equal to just sigma square. Okay. If you have a further confusions, read the handwritten documents that I provided. And if you still have a problem, just see me. And the and during my office hour, I can explain it further. So now take a look at this. I obtain, I, I, I express this gamma zero in terms of sigma square one minus phi square. Purpose is to get the estimate of that. Now, if, if we want to multiply, 
let me write the equation again yt equal to 5 yt minus 1 plus now we want to multiply this or first order autoregressive model now multiply both side by y t minus k and taking expectations and taking expectations what we got y t y t minus k equal to phi expected value of y t minus 1 and y t minus k plus expected value of e t and y t minus k taking expectation will yield us so this is coming if a series is stationary so in that case they are uh, expected value depends on the time difference which is a k in here so from these two the difference is the k so our expected value will be this because i i i derived these things in my handout but today i did not derive it if you read my handout you will see how it will be uh, this quantity this quantity equal to that okay so the re the rationale coming from if these two series are stationary then they are joint expected value expected value of these things will depend on the difference difference of the time so it should be that and there is a derivation in the handout okay so similarly i can write here like this and this could be written as uh, k minus 1 k minus 1 because if you subtract this from that if you subtract this one from that then it will be k minus 1 so this one is the bigger compared to that one the t minus 1 is the bigger compared to that one and this one this one will be zero because these are uncorrelated because they are k leg apart from e at the very beginning of the class i said that e t is independent of y t minus 1 t minus 2 t minus 3 all of this except only just the assumptions that i put at the very beginning so that's the reason this part equal to zero if this part equal to zero then what i have in here this equal to phi k minus one setting k equal to one we get this so and then this part times sigma square this over 1 minus pi square which we obtained in previous part here 1 minus this part I plug in there. So this part I obtain after taking just the variance component of my first order autoregressive model. When I take the variance of my first order autoregressive model, I ended up with gamma zero equal to that. These things when I take, uh, multiply my autoregressive model by y t minus k, and then I got this general formula for k uh, variance term. k variance term, I got this one. Now, if I successively plug the values of the k, gamma 1, 
can be written as phi gamma zero. Gamma zero value is obtained before. So I have this quantity now. Sigma square. Sigma square and sigma square E are the same thing. These are the same thing. This is the error variances. Okay. So I have this part. Now if I plug two, let us plug k equal to two, we get, we get equal to, if I plug k equal to two in this formula, we got this one, okay? Now in this case, if I plug now gamma one, phi, gamma, gamma one below phi over one minus phi, sigma square, then we are getting phi square over one minus phi, sigma square. So this is, if I continue, if I continue two, three, four, then what I will get by method of induction, we will get these things. One minus, it should be phi square. It should be phi square. It should be phi square, phi square. And then there is a sigma square. Okay. So now, this is the correlation coefficient, right? Correlation coefficient, kth order is written where we should put the gamma k, which is the co which is the covariance, and this is the variance part. So this is the correlation coefficient formula, general correlation coefficient formula, correlations of correlation of x comma y is written, covariance of x comma y divided by square root variance of x and variance of y okay that is the formula we are considering in here so after doing this if we plug it in here now those values i want to plug this could be phi k times one over phi square, sigma square. And that one, we already computed this, sigma square over one minus phi square. So this is equal to that, which we obtain just by taking the variance on the auto first order auto regressive model when i take the variances i ended up with this these things i plug in the denominator and numerator part is this one numerator part is that one that one i plug in there so now This part canceled with this part. So what we have remaining in here, this. Okay. So that means right. So what does this mean? If I plug one, so that means this one. And this is what correlation. Correlation of what? Correlation of y, t, and y, t minus 1. So that means, that means, in this model, you have y, t, and y, t minus 1. This is thus the correlation of these two. And then you can predict. Listen, why did I do all of these computations? Remember, in certain places, I plug this value, right? 
I plug this value. This value actually computed in your hand node. I avoided in here. If you read the hand node, you need this. You will find this. <clears throat> Time is running out so fast, so I should I should I, I should do these things, but I I I I did not have the time to compute these things. But if you read the handout, you will see. Remember last time when I write the model like this way, yt equal to phi e t uh, minus one and then et, then I said, how can I compute these things? Remember? Do you have any questions that I ask? Then at the example I have showed you, when the five values are given, then we can compute these things. There, there is no procedure for doing that things in that. For the moving average model, but for the AR model, we have shown that this is the formula. So that means this is equal to lag one. So that means Again, so this k that means how many legs? Okay, how many legs in there? So if rho equal to one, so that means you are finding this will be correlation coefficients for the leg one. If it is equal to three, that means correlation coefficients of the current and leg three. Understand right? Correlation coefficient of the current and the leg three. If this is equal to row 7 that means current and the leg 7 correlation coefficients this is the way the parameters of this model that i write these models of this parameter should be estimated okay so this is just the correlation coefficients <clears throat> okay let me we have still uh, almost an hour let me estimate for the uh, second order model okay second order model i i will go quickly again remember if you have a, any confusions those of you if you have any confusions, how did I write like this way? How did I write like this way? These two confusions, if you have, if you have these two confusions, please read my handout that I have uploaded, okay? I did not derive this in here, but before that it was discussed and it was derived in there, okay? If you have a confusions about this, how can I write like this? How can I write like this? And if you do not understand, please stop by my office. I will clarify you. Now suppose I have AR2, autoregressive model with second lag in the model in addition to the first lag, y t minus 1 plus this is phi 1, this is phi 2, y t minus 2 plus e t. These are the things. Multiplying both sides by multiply both sides by y t minus k and take expectation take expectation so if i multiply this y t y t minus k phi 1 y t minus 1 t minus k phi 2 y t minus 2 t minus k e t y t minus k and take the expectation in here take expectation in here what I'm getting in there, this. Again, please, if you do not understand how I write equal to this, read my handout. 
from there it is clearly mentioned and if you do not understand see me i will explain these things to you okay <clears throat> see all of this procedure is just a simple algebra okay there is no like algorithm there is no calculus right that is why i write there fortunately if we can find mean variance and correlation structure we can easily identify the model see how the guy 97 years ago he came up with this model understand i come up with this model and then it is not that easy see this is a random quantity and that is also random quantity and then you are modeling these things if you think that way then it will see how this come to his mind so the simple multiple regressions in the even Poisson regression, negative binomial regression, Lasso and quantile regression, all of this right hand side is always fixed. Axes are predictor. Axes are predictor, those are fixed. And if that would be random, then you have a linear mixed effect model, random effect model. But he modeled these things, one series with respect to other, but how he computed all of this. Think like what is amazing in this model, how it is different from the other. So then you will get interest to learn more and more. Okay. So now after this, I have to take their uh, pi one and then it should be k minus one, then phi two, uh, it should be uh, k minus two. And this term will be zero because at the very beginning we said that uh, each yt is uncorrelated or independent. This is the sign of the independent with yt minus one, yt minus two up until all other values. So et is independent of that, but et are not independent of yt are not independent. So let me cancel this. ET are not. So this is the current error is not independent of the current value of the series. These two terms are not independent, but all other are independent. Independence means covariance is zero. Okay. Okay. So after this, now uh, we want to find the uh, correlations. In order to find the correlation, uh, divide both sides, both sides by, divide both sides by this to get If we divide both sides by this, phi one, like this, then it should be correlation coefficient, k minus one, k minus two. for all k equal to one, two, three. Leg one, leg two, leg three, okay? So if I plug in here, k equal to one, then we get these things. Uh, okay, one equal to zero. And if I plug in there, then it will not accept the value. So in that case, uh, this is equal to phi 2 and this is equal to minus 1. So remember uh, in the properties that I have written for relation structure, this and that are the same thing. Okay. This and that are the same thing. The properties that I mentioned in there, uh, let me see if I mentioned in there. Yeah, I, I, I mentioned in it there. 
I mentioned it in there in the properties. Okay. So after this, uh, I have this quantity from there. I I can put here like this phi one row zero phi two row one for that one. If I take row common, then one one minus if you take row one it is the same problem again. After a certain period of time, it's become inactive. So How can I put this down? Okay, so what is the purpose now? Purpose is that we consider second order autoregressive model and then autoregressive model after getting, we multiply it by the Y. My goodness, it is now even moving up. So we multiply it Y T minus K in order to find the estimates of the parameter. Let me see, let me open the new one. Oh, it even not giving me opportunity to open a new one. So stubborn. No, he is not giving me to do anything. It is happening like a other undergraduate class, same thing happened. Close window, let's see. Young people are in there, right? Boishnabi, you can hear me, right? Yes, Professor, I can hear you. Or my computer is got frozen. I can hear you, Professor. Okay, so the option, I don't want to restart these things. <laughs> Task manager where? Here? Task manager? Task manager. Here? This one? So it is a new de development, I guess. No, no, no. Whatever the program is running. Yeah, it is handled. We can yeah. go to task manager. I did not know this thing. I should know this. I have been using computers since 2000. <laughs> I should know this. Learn every day. <laughs> Learn every day, right? No, I should know that. I should know that. Why it is not working? We just we just uh, kill everything and then restart. <laughs> Okay. Okay. So what I got after after multiplying both sides by YTK minus one, we got these equations. We got this equation YK K minus one plus this and then k minus 2. This is what we got. But when the expectation is taken on the other terms, 
that things will produce us the zero result. Okay. Now, if, if, if we divide it by this, if we divide it by this, uh, pi k, and that one is phi 1, and this is phi 2, I guess. Yeah, this is phi 2. Then it will be uh, k minus 1, this, and k minus 2, like that. And then what we get in here? This is called the k minus 1 plus this uh, k minus 2. So now if you plug k equal to 1, if you plug k equal to 1, this is equal to always 1 because this is a correlation coefficient within the same variable. Okay? And this is also the property of the correlation coefficient. First order lag. That lag could be negative. That lag could be positive. Okay? That lag could be negative. That could lag could be positive. So, like when you subtract, when you plug the value, it will come. So that is why when I write the properties, I mention these things. Now, if we plug k equal to one, we will get in here one and then phi one, and then this is equal to zero, and this is equal to I get minus one. So this could be replaced as this phi two one, and that one could be written as one minus phi two, and then phi one, this is equal to one. So that means phi one, and then from there, I can find phi 1, 1 minus phi 2. This is the estimate. This is the estimate that we can get for the second order autoregressive model. I can express this uh, in terms of correlation coefficients. Okay. When we plug k equal to 2, when we plug k equal to 2, and above value and above p1 we get we get what this i'm i'm plugging now two if we plug two in here then i got here phi one p1 and then phi two phi zero two minus two equal to zero which is equal to one so I got here phi one plus this because that one equal to one. And then I get there that value equal to this. And phi 2 could be written as phi 1 square, phi 2, and phi 2 square, 1 minus phi 2. Okay. Successive values of P key can be easily calculated numerically from the recursive relations as mentioned in there. So this is the recursive relations. This is the recursive so successive values of Successive values of row k can be obtained numerically from.
from the above recursive formula. Okay, so then it it could go. So I discussed first order auto regressive model and then second order and then third order. If you continue these things, you can find this value. And finally, for the P8 order auto regressive model, there is also a formula. I'm just writing the last part, not doing the all mathematics to derive the values. That one. Yeah. So, if this is the model, then successive values p equal to one to one d, and using p equal to zero, we get the general dual rule. So, if our model is in this format. Like the I discussed first order, second order, now pth order. Y t minus one, put here this two, y t minus two, and go stop in p, y t minus p plus epsilon t. It is in this format, and if we apply above procedure, Finally, our purpose is to express this in this format, which will be k minus one two up until this k minus p for k equal to one. So the way we computed this value after plugging this, see, take a look at that. So this was our value that we obtained from the second order model after multiplying by y t minus uh, y t minus k and then dividing it by the uh, variance formula. We got the expressions like this. Similarly, for the pth order things, we will also get this type of formula, okay? So in such a cases, we can compute any row values under these circumstances. Okay. So I need, I I I have thirty more minutes, but I just want to stop in here. In next class, next class I will discuss the combination of auto regressive and moving average together. So that means. So that is called the auto regressive model, sorry, auto regressive moving average model that is coming from AR plus MA. MA. These things together put, then it is known as the ARMA model. So that class could be maybe uh, one hour long. Understand? And then after things giving break, we have two more classes. So two more classes, maybe I will take questions or maybe some discussing something new for you. Understand? Yes, so next class will be maybe one hour class. One hour class, I will discuss these two models, how to combine these two. I'm coming. How to combine these two models together for a prediction and how what is the situation. So what we learned, we have a moving average model that we have learned when the data is time series. And today we have learned auto regressive model how to model current data with respect to past values of the same variable. Most interesting thing that you have learned, here is the same response variable are modeling one with respect to another. Do you understand? This is the main thing. Stock price is the important variable, but stock price you are modeling with respect to previous stock value. Okay? And this is a huge development. This is a huge development that 1926, the guy who developed this thing. And I have shown you how to, how this parameter, he avoided the multivariate distributions, right? If, if I were a person during that time, I said that, well, 
So left hand side random, right hand side random, both of these random. How can I do all of these things, computations? Okay, people gave a lot of effort. That is why now we are understanding. Yes, gentlemen, what is the question? Can you explain Asai chains? Like how do Asai chains? Asai means. Uh, uh, this one? So the last Asai chains for the table. I think it was six. Homework is not the final project. No, no, no. Oh, yes. Not the project. Yeah. Well, so there is a some values I have given, right? Already, you see five values are given, right? Yes. I are you understanding? Five values are given, right? Sketch these things. Sketch these things. So the model you can consider there how the model look like if you five values are given there. Okay. So for example, I mentioned here your. Moving average model should be this format. Write the moving average model on the graph. They will put the values of the pies. Okay. And how it behaves and how the values are coming. So, last class, I did an example of moving average, right? Car sales, right? And see at the top, I, I put the value of that parameter value, right? 0.5. And then current value during that time. In the morning, they go to the car shop, they found that four cents. Which one? At this condition, you are giving the values. If you don't mind. Okay, let me open the. You 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 are struggling for doing this. This is a very simple one. Yeah, so I, I use this. So, I sketch the autocorrelation functions for the following MA2 model. So, can you write MA2 model? Okay. With parameters, <laughs> this MA2 model has two parameters, right? So, two parameters theta 1 and theta 2. So, different values of the theta 1 and theta 2. Listen, different values of theta 1 and theta 2 and read my first lecture, first half an hour, 30 minutes. And there is the equation I put. Yeah, on the equation, these values you will plug, you will get some values, and from there you just plug it. Okay, so, so in the law was when you are submitting the assignments, when you are like, upload, do we use like Excel, do we use like Excel, do we use like Excel, do we use like charts, or we just mark Or even you can do by hand. Take a look at that. This is AR1. This is the easiest, most easiest homework. AR1, right? Yeah. I told the AR1, right? But five values I have given, right? Five values I have given, right? Yeah. Happy now? Yeah. And the ARMA model is just like this. This is a combination. ARMA model, I said one, one leg for the auto and one leg for the MA. One leg for the AR, one leg for the MA. Okay, I'm going to stop in here.